everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today's video theme is the result of two different Patreon polls. One that was picking an abstract color inspiration, and the other that was picking a fiber type. So I'm super excited to dye some hopeful alpaca today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning on dyeing some alpaca yarn by itself today. Sometimes when I dye a fiber content I don't dye as often, I'll do it side by side with one that we know really really well, but today we're gonna focus on our, our alpaca and creating something really beautiful. Today we're gonna dye some Knit Picks Andean Treasure. This sport weight yarn is 100% baby alpaca. I have dyed it before, I'm sure I have, but this yarn is unbelievably soft, oh, so soft. I love alpaca fibers so much. These particular skeins aren't necessarily the prettiest because I've stored them stuffed in a bag, but dyeing it and even just wetting it is going to fluff things up and remove any creases that we may have in here. But the first thing we're gonna need to do is pre-soak the yarn. And my first step in any pre-soaking process is always to add on a zip tie. I feel like I dye a lot more alpaca blends on this channel than 100% alpaca. I would say that in general, it will absorb color a lot slower than say a wool or even a superwash wool. So we'll see a lot of blending of our colors, but I'm very excited. And now I want to pre-soak it in some plain cool tap water. Goodness, I think I want to do about an hour so we can try to make sure it is well saturated. If you'd like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I'm using in this video, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. And I might earn a commission if you make a purchase uh, through one of my nitpicks or Amazon affiliate links. All right, this yarn is not that absorbent. As I said, I'm pretty sure I've dyed this before, but it hasn't been for a while, which is why I want to do a nice long pre-soak here. And the reason why I'm pre-soaking the yarn with no acid is because that's what I always do. Depending on the technique you're gonna do, you can add acid to your pre-soak right away. However, I always start my pre-soaks in plain tap water because it gives me the most flexibility later on in my project. If I decide that I want to do uh, more of a tonal and start doing something with no acid at all, which maybe we'll do today, maybe we'll start with no acid. Uh, if I want to do a technique like that, then it's handy to have started with no acid in the pre-soak. Uh, but ultimately, it's just a matter of preference. Likely, we will be adding some acid to our dye bath as soon as we get that set up. Yeah, I can tell it's not soaking up water that quickly. Uh, we'll wait about an hour and I can evaluate if I want to wait overnight, uh, depending on how dry things still feel. It's been about an hour and while it does seem like it's pretty well saturated, I think I'm going to go ahead and let it soak overnight just so that way we avoid dry patches because sometimes if there's like one little patch that doesn't absorb dye at all, then that can really bug you at the end. And tomorrow morning, I'll pop in a skein of Knit Pick Stroll uh, to use as a yarn mop while we're working on the dyeing of this yarn. Actually, I'll pop it in right now. If this is the first of my videos that you're watching, a yarn mop is a skein of yarn that I use to wipe, to either soak up excess dye or wipe excess dye from my hands onto. And so it'll be mostly off camera during the video, but this yarn base is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And in contrast to our alpaca, where I still see a little bit of dryness in here, this yarn soaks up water so, 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 so fast. <laughs> and so, Sometimes this doesn't even really need a pre-soak and you can get great coverage. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. The combination of a hopeful inspiration for technique and color palette with the alpaca is going to work in our favor. Because when I think of hope, 
I think of also some calm tranquility to it and so I'd like there to be some softness to our colors and the way they combine versus something sort of more loud and wild and variegated. Uh, if it's we're gonna go for variegated it's gonna be softer which since alpaca takes a little bit longer to absorb color we should end up getting more blending and a sort of soft more muted feel to everything overall in theory <laughs> And as for our color palette, I spent some time sitting in my chair just sort of thinking and I realized sunrise. Uh, I don't know if when we look at the yarn in the end we're going to see a sunrise yarn, but a sunrise palette of ooh, maybe some like blue grays with some hints of like a soft pink or yellow that blend into an orange maybe, uh, just like a hint of sort of a brightness. Uh, starting to glow, not fluorescence, but just glow from the otherwise darkness of night. That feels pretty hopeful to me. So since the inspiration is abstract, I don't have a specific color that I'm trying to nail, but I'm going to go pull some colors that I feel like fit in this family. I pulled a lot of different colors to play with for our hope inspiration. I've got some soft sort of sun rays colors, uh, Dharma Honey Mustard, Peach Blast, and Flamingo Pink. And then for sort of the darkness that maybe we'll play with, I've got Tornado Gray, which is the one I'm considering using the most of. But then Twilight Gray sometimes will break, and so I don't know what that would do, but Twilight I mean, it's like the opposite of sunrise, but I brought that over. Indigo blue and true black, just depending on what the colors are doing on the yarn. And we'll see what we can get. In our dye bath, I'm about to add eight cups of water. And then I'm planning to add four tablespoons of white vinegar. This is 5% acetic acid. Our yarn mop that's going to be off to the side still has a little bit of water in it. I'm adding a tablespoon of vinegar on it. And then I'm just sort of squeezing that through just so we have that acid in here. And then I'm going to squeeze the extra out, add it into our dye bag. So a tiny bit more acid there. And now I am carefully bringing over our 200 grams of alpaca yarn, which I just noticed when I went to go get the yardage information that even though my labels, because I bought this a while ago, said sport, I think Knitpix has updated the weight to be DK based on customer feedback. Now, with our water level we have here, we have tons of water. Uh, I have a feeling that any colors we add will soften anyway because I think that there's going to be a lot of spread with this. Who knows, we may end up with something super dark. <laughs> we will see. But I'm going to try to play with these colors in a very Rebecca technique. But I'm going to start heating things up. We're on two burners and once we start to see some steam on the surface, I'm going to put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses and gloves so we can start dyeing our yarn. Now I could take my idea of a sunrise a little bit literally, but that's not what I'm planning on doing here today. Because I could make a variegated yarn that's mostly dark within the sunrise coming out, but I really want to more randomly apply these colors and it's more the color palette of what I'm going for. Okay, the flamingo pink is the third of these colors that I'm adding. I'm going to need to reduce the heat. I'm doing a lot of the pink. I probably need more gold. But you'll notice that I'm laying down these brighter colors first and reducing the heat to low because I want to see how they spread on this yarn. Um, I'm going to come and start working it through a little bit. Uh, I'm not specifically going for speckles. If we end up with some, that's okay, but I don't think 
we would get firm speckles on this yarn. I could be wrong. We could have enough acid. And actually, it does look like we're getting some speckles. So that's actually kind of exciting. I wouldn't be mad if we ended up with some speckles, but I want to try to get a feel of how these are spreading on this base layer before we go and add some of the deeper colors. And so I am sort of speckling on these colors because I figured, let's give us a base of the sunset and then we'll build up the darkness it's emerging from. At least that's what I have in my head. Now we have enough water in here that these colors should spread a lot. Uh, you'll see that we, not just from when I'm helping it, but we are getting spread and dimension in here. Uh, likely because things aren't going to strike that fast. But those pinks actually do seem to be striking quickly. So that's kind of exciting. I'm feeling a little unsure. Here's some peach blush coming in, layering these colors. I like how soft they are right now, and I don't mind if we have a bit of white left in the yarn either. And here's me being totally optimistic. If we end up adding the dark colors and then we end up not seeing a lot of this, it could be the moment just before dawn. <laughs> How's that for some optimism? Oh man, this is pretty already though. Now, I'm going to do something that isn't what I would normally do. And I'm going to flip this yarn now. And I did not wait very long at all. Because it looks like that the pinks are striking pretty quickly. I mean, we're definitely seeing spread, but quick enough that I can add more of these colors to the opposite side of the yarn to get that layer settled because I'm gonna to wanna to be a lot more careful once I add colors that just have more depth, more darkness, because those I don't necessarily want to spread as much. I'm finding myself going a little bit heavier with some of these colors. I don't care how bright or pastel things feel. Now, in between each color, I am wiping my hands on the on a yarn mop and then wiping my hands again on a paper towel to dry them off. This is some of that flamingo. So I keep looking at this and being like, oh, I love how soft it is. But I have a feeling if we are gonna just take this yarn and not add a deepness to it, then <laughs> It's very possible. Uh, if we weren't going to add more color to it, I think it's very possible that it would feel quite muted in the end because sometimes that's just what happens. Okay. That is very pretty. Doo -doo -doo. And again, the more pastel areas are totally welcome. But the main thing I'm trying here whoop, is to make sure I'm adding color to both skeins. Uh, not necessarily the same way, but in similar ways. I'm working this through a bit. But I'm pleased with how quickly the colors are striking. Uh, I've dyed some superwash alpaca with really great results, but I have not dyed this non-superwash alpaca much. And I'm a little nervous about felting, but I think I think hopefully it should be okay. I'm a little scared for what I'm about to do, but we're going to test it out. I'm going to take some tornado gray, which maybe is a little risky because it's a color that I don't have a good feel for how it spreads. I know that it is a bluer toned gray. And I'm speckling it down there, and I'm going to wait now. Uh, I want to see how much it spreads and what it does. Because where the gray is going on top of some of these other colors, it's giving like a haze that is really, really pretty. And I don't mind that. It's just I want these other colors to show through. 
let me zoom you in. It's hard with the reflection of the light, but you can see over here. You, uh, the angle of the light was making it hard, but you can see that darkness. But we can still see some of those colors coming through. And I really like that. It is a little bit hard to see because of the reflection of the light. I don't know if it'll read sunset. It might be like a little moody and muted, but let's go ahead and give this five minutes and then we'll try to move the color. And if I like the effect, then we can go all over. Or we could do this effect up to a point on the yarn. Oh, I think I really like this effect. Oh man, okay, I think we're gonna go for it. Tornado Gray is one of the best colors because it really is a true gray versus like a purple or a blue. Oh, okay, hopefully I'm not doing it too heavy. It can be sparse in areas, but this is so fun. I'm trying to use a very light hand with it. And I think what I'm gonna do for now is we're gonna go to about there and then maybe stop. Actually, we'll go a little bit closer and we'll see how we feel about it. I just set a timer for five minutes. The one thing we don't know is what's happening on the reverse side of the yarn. We don't know if we're getting sort of a massive spread and therefore we don't see any of these colors peeking through. But even there, it's so pretty. So zooming in, you can kind of see how we have some speckles. But I feel like it's still hard to see on camera because of the combination of colors and then the reflection of the light on the surface. And I think I, we're even a little overexposed. Maybe is that a little more accurate? I don't know. Whatever it is, though, I'm kind of digging it. Well, it's funny that I was talking about the light because I think I need to go recharge it. Um, but we still have a little bit. It's just things are going to look darker because it's not as bright. <laughs> I really like the effect we have going on here. And I'm going to make a decision about what we do with this, these ends at the top uh, at the end. But I want to flip the yarn that is releasing some grays in to see the other side. And one thing I want you to note is that I'm putting the yarn back in the same orientation. And that is because if I have some gray dye on the sides down there, I don't want it to rub down here on these patches. Now the color did spread and go through. So I'm really just gonna add a little bit of dye to add some more texture and dimension, but I feel like it might almost be done. I love that we're getting speckles but still spread. Imagine doing this with the yarn uh, with lower immersion, which would not encourage as much spread as we're getting here. I think that that could be really pretty. Interestingly, the gray spread on some of the pale yellow is making it look almost white. Uh, and so I'm a little amused by that. But there we go. I think, I think that this might be it. I'm actually super, super excited and happy. I mean, we still have the yarn mop. Um, but what I'm gonna do now, goodness, I think we're gonna just let things heat for 30 minutes. Wahoo! And I'm gonna go charge my light. A little bit darker, but I have to say I'm excited and a little nervous about felting this. I'm glad I kept some of that color at the top, but like you feel the color down below too. I don't know if you guys are gonna love this or hate it, but you know what? I think it did what I wanted it to do. We'll see when it's cool. But anyway, as for what is left over here, I'm coming over with our yarn mop. There wasn't a ton of color on it, and so I'm sort of smushing it back and forth here in the warm dye bath. I'm gonna add more water. I feel like we have plenty of acid in here. 
And I did just turn the heat back on. Right, but let's heat set this for 30 minutes. I'll remove it, wash it off camera, let it cool. And we have our 100% alpaca yarn and I absolutely see some speckles on here. I'm so excited and intrigued and optimistic about what else we might be able to do with this yarn base moving forward. But for now, I'll let it cool completely, completely before we wash it. Our alpaca yarn has cooled off. Oh, it is cold outside on this January day. Hopefully I didn't felt anything. And I love this like the light coming out and coming like through the trees. So pretty. And the good news is I'm not seeing any bleeding. Alright, I'm gonna add that's a little too much soap, so I'm gonna reduce it by removing some of that water and we're gonna fill up our basin again. Just very gently and carefully rinse our yarn. I find it's the washing stage where people are most likely to have issues with felting versus the dyeing stage. But the good news is all the color is in our yarn. So I'm gonna rinse it one more time. Then I'm gonna put it through my spin dryer to remove the excess water and hang it up to dry. The finished yarn is absolutely way more muted than it was while it was wet. I know that I anticipated this. I think I was hoping for a little bit more contrast with those, those tornado gray specks and the main colorway. I'll zoom in in a second, but I do feel those first rays of light sort of peeking through the trees uh, as we get to sunrise. There's no question that we have speckles here. Uh, I see some in the pink especially, which actually I, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if it's coming from the flamingo or the peach blush. Uh, but the tornado gray also did give us some speckles. The sunset area that is exposed has both a softness to it and there is still some vibrancy to it. And so that I'm really happy with the level of color we have there. I mean, I'm happy with the whole colorway. It's just, it's harder, I think, with some yarn bases when you're dying to get something that you love in the pan and then thinking, okay, I might need to push it further because I like what I have here, and if I want the finished yarn to look like it looks in the pan, then you might need to push it more. I am feeling very hopeful about the different types of techniques that we can do on 100% alpaca. I am impressed how quickly the colors struck, which yes, I had a lot of acid present, but there is a lot of potential here, and I don't know, I'm very excited to explore 100% alpaca more. I feel like I dye more alpaca blends than I do just 100% alpaca. And so uh, please give the video a thumbs up if you want to see more of that going forward. The yarn mop has a very pretty softness to it too. I think though, if I told you that, hey, I had like a hopeful sunset in my mind as I was picking out the colors on the mop, maybe you wouldn't feel it, but I do feel it in the main colorway. I just don't know if you will. And so that's where my doubts are coming in. But for me, I feel the hope. <laughs> I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to all of the Chemnitz patrons, including Michelle Martin, Tamara Svanez, Don Jans, Jessica Parco, Karen Siegel, and the other fiber patrons names who you see on the screen right now. And there's some really fun perks over there. You can find more information over at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. But don't forget that subscribing here on YouTube is free, and that is by far the biggest way that you can help support all Chemnitz content. I wanna give another huge, huge thank you to all of the Chemnitz patrons for all of your support. I debated a little bit how I wanted to twist this up, and I think having the brightness sort of over the bump is a fun way to do it because it shows the contrast, which again is soft and subtle, but it shows that more than if this was sort of tucked into the twist a little bit, I think it might have been, it could have been a little bit more lost. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. I have been filming a lot recently and I cannot wait for you to see everything else that I've created uh, that will be coming out in early 2024. Thank you so much for watching.